Welcome back and you're watching Commodity Champions. Yet another uh, thing that continues to buzz in this week and this year has been the crude oil prices. We are trading at a four-month highs. We've done $50 per barrel for the U.S. crude oil prices. And we are, we are up nearly quarter percent higher for 2019, almost a 50 percent retracement from the kind of lows that we saw in December 2018. So there have been various fundamentals right from uh, output cuts from OPEC and allies to the kind of supplies that we see easing in the global markets and then of course it is going to be about the u.s aggressive sanctions on iran and venezuela well there are various factors to keep an eye on but as we see the price is rising the estimates are that we could see higher highs from here as well but uh, to get a further sense on that we are now joined by edward morse on the show Ed, hi, thank you so much for your time. First of all, on, on the kind of moves that we saw in the previous week, especially with the OPEC and allies cancelling the April meeting, and that really led to a stronger sentiment in the crude oil prices. How do you read the meeting and the statements that came therein? Well, I think the, uh, the parties decided that it would be a mistake to meet in April. They wouldn't be any, any closer to, uh, uh, to seeing what was happening in terms of inventories, and they really do have to wait past uh, early May. May 5th is the time when uh, U.S. waivers on, uh, on sanctions against exporters or importers who buy Iranian crude get uh, likely tightened. Uh, so that's an important, uh, uh, it's an important uh, marking point for them to look and see what the U.S. is doing. The U.S. has become a very important player in terms of what OPEC does because of the impact of these sanctions. So I think uh, there's that. I think there were some disagreements between uh, the two major parties, Russia uh, and Saudi Arabia, on, uh, on what was really going on. And I don't think they didn't want to get into uh, a dispute in, in April that might lead to a sell-off in prices. But, but, but it's basically they, they, they were unwise to have picked April as a date to, to begin with, and now they realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, what's your sense on the uh, OPEC and Russia, or the OPEC and the allies cut? How aligned do you see Russia in this? Because OPEC, or rather Saudi Arabia, seems to be calling all the shots here. And, uh, and do you think the output cut, cut agreement actually extends itself into the second half of 2019? Well, th that really depends on where prices are going to be come May, June. Uh, I think the, uh, the Russians have their own objectives. Those objectives overlap with Saudi Arabia. Last year, we saw uh, Russia, in fact, preempting the Saudis and taking the leadership on putting oil back into the market uh, when they started pumping at higher rates in late May before the June OPEC meeting. Uh, and this time, it's the Saudis who really want to see the price getting uh, above what uh, it currently is. They want to see it almost certainly in a $70 range. They don't want to say that publicly because uh, they're concerned about the actions you may, the U.S. may take and pressuring them. Uh, the Russians are not necessarily happy at that price. The companies worry about ruble appreciation. Uh, that tends to happen as oil prices rise. And, uh, and there's uh, a price point that the two differ. So I, I think there's also something else happening politically. We've heard scuttlebutt about uh, the Russians waiting for the Saudis to respond to implement uh, any of the memoranda of agreements that they've had. They've had one uh, on Arctic LNG, which there's been no move to implement. Uh, there's another one on creating a joint services company uh, located in Russia. And there's uh, a third discussion of arms sales on the table. The Saudis have not moved forward on any of them. And I think uh, uh, the Russians are, are indicating that uh, they might be running out of patience. Uh, that might be another reasons why uh, the Saudis uh, didn't want to have a meeting uh, come a month from now. Mm, that point is well taken. And also, as you mentioned, $70 perhaps is now on the horizon. We've seen uh, levels higher uh, being expected on Brent from here as well. Uh, uh, you know, but with the U.S. Uh, uh, constantly reminding OPEC and allies to ease down on their output cuts, with consumer countries and especially India as well being a part of it, asking uh, for the producer countries to ensure enough supplies and lower prices, do you see 70 and plus kind of levels uh, come for the Brent? And do you see a sustainability there? Well, certainly this is a lot like last year when the U.S., India and China 
all uh, told the Saudis that uh, they're going to kill demand if prices get too high. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, it's not that one can really uh, control the market. The way we look at it, the market is seeing uh, an inventory draw in Q1. We think there's going to be an inventory draw in Q2. In terms of a world where demand might be sluggish, but it's growing, you need more inventory to cover forward days of demand. So all in all, we think $75 might well be in sight for Q2. And then you don't know where geopolitical risks take yeah. you. It, we have uh, concerns about uh, beyond the sanctions, what happens internally in Venezuela and Algeria uh, and perhaps yeah. some other OPEC countries. So uh, it, it, the, the one thing to remember is that the financial markets have been on the sidelines. The markets have been concerned about global growth. The markets are uh, once again uh, in a risk-off environment. If they get into a risk-on environment and oil goes to rent at 75, we could easily see financial participants in the market driving the price up $10 above that. So it's a, uh, it's a difficult balancing act when a major player is now the United States and its sanctions. Uh, and a major market participant are managed money managers around the world who are the sidelines but could get back in either on the short side or the long side. Hmm. So, uh, Ed, I, as you said, we might see $75 per barrel as well on the crude prices. How soon do you see that coming? And uh, what is the range that you would work for the crude oil prices now for the year 2019? So the range has been uh, over $20 a barrel every year since 2014. We've had a range of about $15 a barrel so far this year. Uh, I would not be surprised to see highs that uh, uh, are in the $75 to $80 range just on the basis of inventory draws. Uh, we, we have a bunch of unknowns at the end of the year. Uh, quite frankly, they work in two different directions. Uh, one direction would be to lower prices. That's because there's about 2 million barrels a day of export capacity on the horizon in the U.S requiring pipelines to bring oil from West Texas to the Gulf Coast ports. We expect 2.1 million barrels a day of incremental pipeline capacity. If it comes before the end of the year, that would be very, fairly bearish for the markets. Um, on the other hand, uh, if uh, there is deterioration in conditions in Venezuela, uh, and if we uh, find uh, uh, another disruption to supply somewhere, and if the sanctions on Iran are tightened in May, uh, we could see the higher range that I just spoke about. We think the higher range is much more likely before we see a lower range. Hmm. Ed, uh, how would you look at the Indian demand going forward? Because uh, we've seen the demand pick up yet again in this quarter uh, with the various uh, international reports that we see suggest of the Indian demand growth and Indian economic growth continue from here on. Uh, what is your sense? Where will we see the incremental demand come in from Asia? Is it going to be India? Is it going to be China? Do you see demand growth from other countries too? Sure. Well, we see demand growth from emerging markets as the basis of demand growth for the year. We calculate emerging market demand growth to be around 1.2 million barrels a day. Uh, India could be um, uh, as much as 20 to 25 percent of that. Uh, could be a little lower than the 20 percent number, but it will be an important part of that. Uh, there are emerging markets that are seeing uh, much better growth uh, opportunities this year than last year. Brazil is among them. It's a, not a small country. Uh, China, the demand is, uh, is really an import story rather than anything else. Uh, we had a surge in uh, Chinese imports in January and February. Uh, we expect that to taper off over the course of the year. But, uh, you know, one of the reasons we saw the surge in Chinese imports is that uh, they are opportunistic buyers and they buy the dip and they put oil into uh, their strategic petroleum reserve. That weighs on, uh, on global markets. Uh, we think that, uh, that China alone on the import side is likely to see a rise uh, in imports of around 400,000 barrels a day. They have two very large refineries that were supposed to be in operation or not yet in operation. Undoubtedly, some of the uh, imports that we saw uh, earlier in the year and in, uh, late in December were for uh, inventories and pipeline fill for those two refineries. We think there's a, a way to go on that, so we could see a surge above the number that, that we see. But it's a, it's a good, good solid uh, 1.1 to 1.2 million barrels a day for emerging markets, and India is going to be 
in the 20, 18 to 25 percent range of, uh, of that. That's a very important part of the puzzle. All right. Ed, one final question, and this really is about the macros, where we have seen uh, the dovish global central banks, the U.S. and China trade talks, the Brexit uncertainties. I mean, everywhere you look, there is a bit of that uncertainty in the global markets. How much do you see that, uh, you know, uh, making an impact on the currencies, on the commodity markets going forward from here? So actually flows into emerging markets from advanced economies have been relatively healthy again, uh, as they were at the beginning of last year. Uh, we think that there are leading indicators in China to show that uh, investment is picking up. Uh, with investment picking up, uh, we're going to see commodity demand picking up. Uh, the real puzzle in China at the moment, partly related to trade, more related to domestic policy is what are consumers going to do. We had a very large fall off in retail sales, including automotive sales, a year ago. Uh, there's no sign yet, unlike what's happening on the investment side, there's no sign yet of consumers perking up uh, in China. But we expect government policy uh, to have an impact by the end of the year. So we're thinking of Chinese growth uh, lagging at the moment, but picking up as the year goes by. And we have a relatively optimistic view uh, not on a complete settlement of the trade and intellectual property disputes between uh, the U.S. and China, but uh, progress being made. Uh, so we're looking at growth that may be short of the Chinese target of 6.5 percent, but well above 6 percent, and that should have an impact on neighbors through trade and on the global economy itself. So until we see uh, a real breakdown in those trade talks, uh, we would recognize that Yesterday's data from Europe and Germany in particular were not particularly robust, and that was part of, uh, of the sell-off along with uh, uh, the decisions of the central bank. Uh, but that should work in a more positive way. We, we're still relatively optimistic about U.S. growth, more optimistic than the market on uh, European growth, and, um, and, and we think, uh, therefore, that there's reasons to be bullish oil, bullish copper, bullish iron, or uh, bullish palladium and platinum. All right, Ed, with that, we let you go. So that is the view coming in from the city that uh, they are expecting the bullish queues to continue. Expect the crude oil prices beyond $75 per barrel on the higher side. And not just crude, copper, iron ore, steel are some of the other commodities that they are bullish on in 2019. They expect the incremental demand to continue into the markets going forward. With that, that's all the time that we have on Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.